Is Howard Chaikin. Okay, so I talked earlier. To, they love me. They do love you. It's true. I'm a beloved figure. Do I have food in my teeth? You do not. Okay, good. No, you look great. Oh, you're so Fabulous. Kind. You are just, you lie with beauty. I love that. That's fantastic. Go ahead, please. Okay, so I talked earlier to Steve Kurth, who was one of your... Um, Acolytes. Victim. I mean, Worshippers. Yes, exactly. No, he was very, very... My bitches. He was actually thrilled to have taken your uh, three-day boot camp. And I was just wondering if you could tell us a little bit about what you do in this... Well, let's start Let's start at the beginning. Yeah, why don't you ask a question? Come on. Good, good thumpering. Mm -hmm. Okay. Arr. <laughs> how, did you, how did you start, how did you start uh, doing this program? I was asked by Kla Klaus Janssen uh, to come to New York and participate in this. It, and it was just an absolute powerhouse. And I assume it was just a one-time only thing this some years back. And this was for how many, how many Five people? Guys. Five, Five guys. Five guys. And three days. Three days. Uh -huh. And it started out with just Miss Klaus and me. We had some guest stars come in because neither Klaus nor I are superstar powerhouses. Uh, so we brought some superstar powerhouses in as well. And we also brought an editorial to, to sort of elaborate and, and, and support some of things we were talking about in terms of uh, career management and client, client talent relationships. Mm -hmm. And it's turned into a twice annual affair. And Klaus and I have, have, um, have done it on our own on the road with, at, in, at, in the Savannah College of Art and Design and at Baltimore. And with students? With, with uh, well, in, in Baltimore, it was fans. Uh huh. And at the Savannah College of Art and Design, it was students. And how different is that? And, pardon me? How different is that? Well, you're, deal you're dealing with a, with a much different level of polish and finish and commitment. I mean, the guys we're talking to at Marvel are not newbies. These aren't children. They're, work they're guys who are under contract at the company. And they're, they're guys that the company has a great deal of faith in and a great deal committed to. And they want them to understand the program, that life of, of, of a working career. Right, you were talking about having a flow chart in your studio, that I'm, kind of thing. I'm, yeah, I, I am by nature a very chaotic person. I'm, by, I'm not, I mean, I'm, I'm organized now because I've imposed organization on my own personality. And so you're teaching them to do that? No, not, not, not that literally, but I mean, I mean, I come of a mind that I don't necessarily tell you how to do what to do. I do it and, and let you say, this is how it works for me, and if, and if you want to try this, you're more than welcome to try it. That's, that's been my training. You know, I, 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 I apprenticed at a time when such things were still available. I apprenticed to, you know, to Gil Kane, to Wallace Wood, to, uh, to Gray Morrow, to Neil Adams, and I learned mm -hmm. a great deal from all those guys, particularly from Gil, with whom I did actually the least amount of hands-on work, but learned a great deal about how to do, how he did what he did. And I, and I followed his rhythm and methods. Uh, my, my focus and concentration is on, on storytelling and narrative and graphic design in the service of narrative. And also career management. Uh, uh -huh. Developing a, an understanding what, how the, you evolve from being a hobbyist to a professional. So I believe that, that it's a calling. Uh -huh. It's a vocation. And um, for many of us, it remains an avocation, which is unfortunate because it, it denies you the kind of adult relationship that most grown-ups should have with their clients, you know. Um, like take it or leave it. Well, it, it creates a kind of a, an unjustified resentment on both sides. When, 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 a, when an, an adult approach to the professional experience would, would, be, would be a better service. And, um, and I've had a long career, you know. I mean, I'm, I've, uh, I've gotten old doing comic books. Well, I, I've always been able to talk about my process, because my process is a completely cerebral and intellectual one. Uh -huh. um, I, one of the things I talked about today at this panel I did, is something I've talked about often, that I'm not by any way, in any way naturally skilled or gifted. And I was surrounded by naturally skilled and gifted guys when I came in, and I was like, I was a lame ass. I mean, I had nothing going on. I had nothing but hunger. And in retrospect, that hunger saved my life and uh -huh. built my career. Yeah. Because I was able to to, to stick around all those guys who were natural burned out or ran out of steam or, or began to rest on their laurels. I'm too motivated by paranoia and fear of being identified as an imposter to, to allow that to happen to me. Mm -hmm. Steve, Steve was part of a particularly jolly group. Right. They did get to hear me sing. When I sing, it's usually a sign that it's very, like a lot uh -huh. of fun guy. I drive, my, I drive Klaus crazy by singing. Okay? Pisses him off enormously. <laughs> Only one of the things I do piss him off. I mean, this, I could have a list. But my point is that here's a guy who's like out there working for several years as a professional. He comes mm -hmm. in and, and you're saying like, all right, well, let's learn from the ground up in some sense. You know, let's, yeah. let's do this again. Well, I mean, most of these guys... And, and they can accept it? They take it? Not my problem. 
<laughs> well, no, I mean, it's only your problem for those three days. But... No, it isn't my problem ever. Because uh -huh. my feeling is if they choose not to accept it, it becomes Marvel's problem. Not mine. My understanding, right. I might add, is that there's been a genuinely positive effect of the seminar. I mean, they keep doing it. Right. And they don't keep doing it because they feel like like seeing me in the office three times, you know, three days, every, every couple of months. Right. No, they're doing it because apparently it's, it's, it it's positively affected both these guys delivering material in a reasonable time, maybe figuring out that a month has four, month, four weeks as opposed to six, um, and, and, and approaching narrative with respect. One of the things that happened in, in, the, in the context of, I think it might have been with, with, with Steve. Klaus and I were talking, we were, we were talking about, about plasticity and kin kinesthesia. And how, how we are we work in a static meeting with the implication of, of speed. And Klaus said, we have no camera movement. And I said, that's not true. And I said this literally, it was one of those, those uh -huh. words. And he said, what do you mean? He says, we have deep space. And the two of us went like, Ugh. you know, like dog face sarcasm, you know. It's like, you're right. And we and we, we found ourselves with an entirely new discussion, utterly unanticipated, about the use of deep space to convey movement. And it was just like, wow, yeah, okay. We knew it. We always knew it. It was always there. But we, we, we'd actually articulated an idea about something. And it was really, it was really kind of fun. It was have, really you, fun. have you had it, felt any effect in your own process or work from teaching only, like this? Only in this? Only in the sense, in that, in that great cliche sense, that you figure out what you're doing by teaching it. And I frequently feel that, that, the, that a lot of these guys were talking to us. Come to the pay, come to the, to the table with pages that are arbitrarily laid out. That they're that the panel boards are chosen because that's sort of where the pencil ended up. Right. And that there are these, you know, inept, inept approaches to deep space and inept approaches to to, to lateral movement. Uh -huh. You know, I have an assistant, for example, who's a very talented guy who frequently still doesn't. The, 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 I mean, I have to point out to him that if the character is moving at high speed across a shot, across a lateral space horizontal space, you can't put him here, he has to be here. Logic says that. Uh -huh. so the implication is that he's already made them, he's moving so fast, he's already made them. That's right. really important and, and so utterly crystal clear and obvious to me that when I see that not be the case, it's like, what are you doing? Uh -huh. What are you doing? Yeah. And these guys frequently do that. Yeah. But Klaus and I are very similar in that, in that both of us are, are, are cerebral guys. Uh -huh. You know, we, 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 I mean, because Klaus started out as an inker. The fact that he became a penciler, and as good as he is, is, is beyond me. Recently, he, he did a job about a year ago that, that, that Wilson Cabbage is supposed to be making. It is some of the most breathtaking work I've seen from a professional in years. It's on a par with, with guys like Alex Kotsky and, uh, and Leonard Starr. It's, it, you know, it's on a, you know, the, with the great photorealist comic strips of the 1950s and 60s. It's breathtaking. Um, and I and I and I was I, I told Casa I was I was appalled I was, I was jealous of how good it was because I was incapable of doing work of that quality at that level. I really um, and I'm not sure he believed me. He's, he's a modest guy. I think. Yeah, he is. And, and there, there's plenty to be modest about, but you know, not in this case. You know, that was that was horrible. Shame on me. You know. <laughs> no, no. I mean, it's it's an astonishing job. Um, and, and, and so he's reinvented himself and made him this way. And, and a lot of it has to do with, with, with the very thing you're talking about, oh, yeah. which is the rules. Having an instinctual idea is, is all well and good. Uh -huh. But being able to intellectualize and, 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 and diagram that instinctual idea makes the idea part of the pattern. Uh -huh. the syntax part of the pattern. Yeah, I think that's really right. Wait, I, let's I'm, just take a break here. I have to yeah. see this. Yes, wedding photos happening right next to him. I'm getting married again. <laughs>
Nice. And, they, and it's 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 intense because you're not even quite sure why you're there at first. It's like, oh, they must love us because they're getting us regular books and we must totally know what we're doing. And you show up at Howard and Costco in the nicest way possible. No, you're full of crap. You don't really know what you're doing yet. Here's how you get to the level you need to be. Here's These are the things you need to know about having a long-term career. And, uh, and it's intense. Uh-huh. So it has two aspects, a drawing aspect and a career management aspect. Yes, yes. There, there's a... Do they divide up the work between the two of them? No. Um, Howard and, and Klaus are like this, this uh, well-balanced um, comic book machine that you learn that part of that storytelling, that narrative. That's what they're focusing on. The other side is when they bring in uh, editorial. Different editors will come in. Then being able to say what sound like very simple concepts that you should know automatically, and deep in the back of your mind you do, but until they say it and make it obvious and carve it in stone, like, you know, we're working for clients. This isn't like fun time hobby hobby and we get paid for. This is serious. These are, are our clients and we need to be professional and you hit your deadlines and here's what happens. If you don't hit your deadlines, the whole machine comes to you. And again, obvious stuff that you know when you think you know, but until it's really kind of, you know, until you're kind of smacked in the face with it, and you realize that if you don't take it seriously, it could go away. I've always carried a nice, healthy dose of fear with me in the industry that, that I think has really helped me out a lot. And just listening to Howard like an hour ago during his speech, I, I didn't, you know, he's at a panel, I hadn't realized that it sounds like he's carrying that same thing with him. And that's a good thing because it keeps you from taking it for granted. I learned from that that it's good to be humble and easy to get along with. And again, that seems like an obvious thing. But if it were, you'd have a lot more people that would have longevity in this industry. Yeah. You, you wouldn't be wondering where a lot of some of these older guys have gone. There's a reason that guys have stuck around and the guys have not. Yeah. They have nothing to do with talent. So you were actually doing your drawing pages? Absolutely. And, we had uh, a, couple, a couple times a day they would give us little assignments. We'd have four or five pages. We'd need to break down a page. We'd get, we'd get X amount of time to work on a page. And Howard and Klaus would come back in and rip it to shreds. Which was sorry. terrifying and, and awesome at the same time. Yeah. So. What an opportunity. Yeah. It, re- it really was. Just to. Uh, I mean if you can take it. If you can take it. And there were rumblings that, that some of the guys from some of the prior seminars could not take it. Ah. So, if you go into it... What does not kill me makes me stronger. Yeah, if you can go into <laughs> it and, and, again, humble yourself, it was amazingly beneficial. And when did you do this? Um, maybe like a year and a half ago. And did you see a change in your work and your, your, your approach to working? I did. I did. And... What was more gratifying was that I would get comments back from one of the talent guys at editorial saying, we've seen this change in your work. And that's not just from a... That comment isn't coming from a place of being cordial. It's coming from a place of, we're glad that our investment is paying off. And in return, what I get is this awesome relationship with them, these steady work. The books that I've been dying to do since I was a little kid.